Hello, everybody. So this is being broadcasted live. So I'm just going to mention um, Diafano is a nonprofit platform to support local artists here in Miami. Um, all the art sales, 100% goes directly to the artists. We do not take a cut from it. This is primarily to fully support the local artists here. And I wanted to give a really big thank you to everybody that's here, everybody that's watching, to Shotgun USA, Shotgun Live, this beautiful space, Concreta Sala, Priscilla, Nick, Mauricio, Charlie, Betty, Yanni, literally everybody that helped make this happen. So, yes. Okay, so welcome to the panel portion. My name is Betty McGee. Uh, my handle on Instagram is bath.pdf. Um, this is also the first episode of Yanni and I's uh, radio show called MAS, which is short for Miami Art Scene. So... Con accento. Exactly. MAS. <laughs> So, um, Yanni, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Yanesi Reyes, a.k.a. Yanni, a.k.a. Art Chonga. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be interviewing uh, Jao. I don't want to book you. You can call me Joa. Joa? Joa and Sarah. Okay, Joa and Sarah. Hi. Hi. So nice to meet you and get to know your work. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for coming. Yeah, so we want to start off with getting to know you a little bit more. Uh, I want to know, like, where did you grow up? Where are you from? Right. Where are you now? How has that impacted your work lately? All right. So I was born in Brazil, and that's where I lived um, until I was 15, actually 14. And then I came to the U.S., to Florida, and that's where I did my high school years and um, college. And I'm still a student um, my last semester at FIU here in Miami, and what I are you feel studying? I study arts. Right, um, okay, of course. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else I know how to do, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I think that from like traveling and moving so much, like from different cities, schools and everything, that definitely impacts my art and like everything I see and other artists I go meet and stuff, yeah. Awesome, yeah, so you've been around, you've been, you're from Brazil and now you're based in Miami, correct? Yes. What part of town do you usually like traverse? Right now I live at Coral Gables, but I usually hang out with my friends in like downtown or like here, the Haiti is pretty cool. Wynwood sometimes, I don't know, yeah. everywhere. For sure, yeah. yeah. Wynwood's changed a lot lately. Yeah, it's changed, yeah. <laughs> and sure. so I'm curious to know, like, is there anything in particular that, crea that inspires you to create, such as things you see on the street, or if there's any art movements or aesthetics that you follow? Mm, for sure, I like a lot of, like, street art uh, and surrealistic art, um, which is very present in my work, but I try to do it on my own style, my characteristics. Um... All the artists I follow online and stuff, and you know, music, everything inspires me. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of music, I actually saw last year you dropped Utopia, your yes. album. It's a rap album. It's largely in Portuguese, right? Yes. Yeah, and all so, could, yeah. So I couldn't understand any of it. So I want you to tell me and the audience uh, a yeah. little bit more about your concept. All right. So I always listen to rap. I grew up listening to it and rock and roll to all this stuff. Um, but I always had this dream of making my own like, album. And I have this friend that grew up with me in Brazil, and he's a really good producer, Yonker. Shout out, Yonker. Yeah. Um, so I texted him one day, and I was like, hey, dude, I'm living here in the US. We far, but I've been writing a lot of stuff, and I love your beats. Um, Maybe I'll go to Brazil next year and I'll stay two months there and we can record some stuff. And he was like, yeah, for sure. He sent me a couple beats and then I wrote about like, I don't know, it was my first album, so I didn't really have that much experience. So I wrote more about like my, what I like to hear and my own ideas, trying to translate a little bit of my paintings or my music. I don't know, it's very psychedelic. And, uh, psychedelic, low-fi, boom-bap. That's nice. how I would categor categorize it. 
Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I heard a lot of like early 90s hip hop influence, yeah, like yeah, Tribe Called sure. Quest, like yes, sort of like vibe in your music. Cool. Awesome. So what are some, you know what, I'm going to pass the mic, the mic to Mbeti. Right. I think she's great follow-up questions. Uh, yeah, so you kind of mentioned that in your music you're also sort of channeling stuff that you're putting into your visual work. Yeah. So I kind of have a very broad question about how you sort of have this absurdist world you've created, right? And it's expressed through not only now different visual mediums, but also music. Is there sort of like a, a narrative or a fiction built into this world? Because it's so, you know, figurative. Like, are some of these characters like recurring people or do they have names? Do they know each other? Yeah. Um, so, all of my paintings have a little bit of me on it. Like, you can see like the features, eyes, eyebrows. And at the same time, like people around me, my cat is present a lot of them. I don't know, in places I've been. Yeah, I like to put a little bit of everything on it. I try to build my own aesthetics. So that's my main focus. And then throughout like different series of paintings, I'll have a different theme. But mainly I just want to have the same aesthetic so people recognize me and stuff, yeah. Okay. It's Thank yes. you. Appreciate yes, it, it is. So as a follow-up, I kind of wanted to know, for this show in particular, uh, did you create like one entire like body of work for it that's new? And how is that sort of shown in the gallery? Like, how did you choose your display? And So um, I pretty much selected my favorite paintings that I've done for the past couple of years, actually. And those in the back wall are actually my recent work that I did this year, and the one on this wall here, the caveman as well. Large They're pretty much, um, sorry. No, lots of large scale acrylic paintings. It's right? oil painting actually. Oh, oil paintings, yeah, yeah. okay. I use oils. So they're pretty much about technology and nature. That's my last series I did for college actually. Except the big one there, the under the water scene. That one I did specific for this show. But they all talk about like nature and technology, how they are connected and how technology is taking over it. So sort of like the tension, the power yeah. struggle between the two. Mm -hmm. For sure. Which in a place like Miami, you know, we're, we're very quickly becoming like Bitcoin central. I think that's really prescient to talk about right now. So could you tell us more about your process? Like what does the vibe in your studio feel like? Is there a sort of like way that you approach your ideas from ideation to execution? Mm, well, so from whoever knows me, know that I paint and draw all the time. I'm always drawing everywhere I go. I have to have like a sketchbook and a pencil. So I draw all my ideas on paper and then when I get home, I kind of brainstorm it and select the best ones and combine them together until I get a big piece. And then I start on it. And yeah, it takes me a lot of hours, but I love doing it, so. And I don't have a studio. I paint all in my house. Like, my house is my everything studio. Mm, I see. Yeah. How does that feel, like, not having that sort of delineation between, like, I create here and I live here, I sleep here, I eat here. Yeah. Because I have the same sort of situation yeah, too. You know, it's overwhelming. Miami is crazy. It's, <laughs> it's overwhelming for sure. Like my goal right now is to find a, spot, a space for me to like have all my paintings, equipment, my tattooing equipment, um, drawing, everything. Because I don't like having random clients going to my house whenever I have like friends or I want to have the place clean or I don't want to clean today so I don't have to have people. Yeah, it's kind of overwhelming, but I'm grateful for it. For sure, you got to make it yeah. happen. Young artists out here. Yep. Well, yeah, I actually wanted to ask you because I see that you're dabbling in a lot of different mediums. You're not only a painter, but you also tattoo. You obviously are interested in fashion. Yes. I realize, you, I saw your Instagram the other day. You're also experimenting with airbrush, right? And I see a couple homies are yeah. wearing the shirts or representing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, like, do you have a favorite medium, a least favorite medium that you're like, oh, I hate using this? I would say, like, professionally, I would love to be a painter. Like, but I would never be able to stick to one medium. Uh, drawing is basically the foundation of everything, so you need to have drawing, and it applies it on graffiti, applies it on airbrush, applies it on painting, so you always have drawing. I don't know, I just like to experience with everything, and 
don't lock myself in one thing. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So you don't really have like one that you want to focus on mainly. You just want to focus on being unfocused. I want to have shows diverse. like this, like everything together, so people enter an environment, not only paintings on the wall. Like you walk around stuff, sculptures, drawings, try on clothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Listen Love that. to music, everything. Yeah, it's like a totally immersive, multi hyphenate experience. That's yes. awesome. Uh, what mediums are next for you? Is there anything else you want to like explore? Um, I've been getting into a lot of sculpture. Here I only have one. I've been creating a lot, but it's very big and I don't have a truck, so it's not all the time that I can have them in my house. Sometimes I have to get rid of them or store them in the campus storage place. Yeah, but I want to get big into sculpture, and for now, that's it. And you want to get into, like, ceramics or, like, mixed media? Yeah, I do like everything. I do ceramics. Uh, I do, like, mixed medium, metal work. I love doing everything, but, yeah. All right, so I have so many questions about the sculpture. Yeah, uh, let's see. <laughs> it is so intriguing. Um, first of all, what is the cheese made out of? Is it real cheese? It's real cheese. Oh, my God. Yeah. My mom brought it to me. <laughs> okay, and so, yeah, so next question, the face with the faucet. Oh, yeah. That was actually a school project. It's my, my face. I cast it on clay. Like, I put my face in it and then I turned it sideways so it would be <laughs> kind of warped. And then um, I mixed plaster and I used it as a mold. And you let it cure for, like, a day or two, and after I just put that thing the on faucet. The, the faucet, yeah, on the forehead with screws. I don't know, very abstract. Yeah, it's very abstract, but it's entirely consistent with your painting and drawing as well. Um, one thing I noticed kind of throughout your body of work is this play with both proportion and scale. Yeah. Proportion in sort of the figures themselves, there's like a slight grotesque nature mm -hmm. to it. Um, and then also this like play and scale where there's like miniature people kind of swimming in like a sink almost, you know, like this play of scale too. What is, where did that come from? Mm, I think I've done that since I was like super small, since I started drawing. That's always been my main characteristic, like disproportion, but at the same time proportion people. And I don't know, I find it like beautiful actually, like the aesthetics of long arm people's like very long stuff. I, don't know. I think that's my main aesthetic goal. And I like to put animals too with human actions. Yeah. Yeah. I I love also this floating cigarette motif. Yeah, that's very mm. It's really fun. Yeah. And that's just something that sort of came to you in a doodle once or Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's the lesson. Draw all the time. Draw every day. Draw every day. Every <laughs> second. Sure. Find your style. All right, you have a question? Um, I guess, uh, what advice do you have? Betty actually came up with this one. I thought it was a brilliant question to ask. But what advice do you have for aspiring artists who are, might be watching this? To people that want to be an artist? Yep. Um, well, it's a tough field. Very hard. Uh, people don't value work that much, but you just have, if you love to do it, you're going to live to create, and then one day you're going to create to live, right? Mm. That's how you're going to get your money. Wisdom. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, how old are you? I'm 22. <laughs> Wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom. Wow. Well, do you have any other burning questions? Uh, sure. One last question from me is just, What's next for you on the horizon? Keep painting, keep drawing. I'm going to graduate soon. Maybe I'll go travel to different countries doing like art resident residency. Um, I want to keep doing shows here for people in Miami when I get to know more people around here. I don't know, just want to get my name out there and show people my work. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming us into this world. Yes, it's thank awesome. you for coming. Yeah.